Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith and I'm in Dryden, Ontario. And I'm in front of the, uh, this pulp and paper plant, which is uh, owned, I believe, by Domtar now. But it used to be the, called the Pulp and Paper Company. Um, and it's uh, Dryden uh, Chemical Company. And this video is the first video of three. So this um, plant was the source. This, from this plant, they dumped nine tons of mercury, metallic mercury, into the river behind it between 1962 and 1970. This, uh, this uh, metallic mercury, of course, contaminated the water and produced um, uh, methyl, uh, merc methyl mercury and uh, a lot of nasty different chemicals. And it flowed in the river 100 kilometers downstream to grassy, grassy uh, narrows, Ontario, okay, a, a reserve. You call it a reservation in the U.S. And it flowed beyond grassy narrows to the White Dog Reserve, okay? And it contaminated the complete watershed. So the next video I'm going to be filming from the Grassy Narrows Reserve and, uh, you know, talk about the uh, history. But basically, this was one of the worst cases of environmental poisoning in Canadian history. It was the uncontrolled discharge of between 9,000 to 11,000 kilograms of metallic mercury in the water um, from the Dryden Chemical Company's chloralkali plant into the headwaters of the 235 kilometer long Wabagoon River, okay, from 1962 to 1970. The Wabagoon River goes into the English River and, and uh, it flows, you know, from the headwaters, it flows both ways, one way to the uh, reserves up north and also over to the Winnipeg River and, and uh, then flows uh, west. Now, the river bottom is glacial clay, which is very solid and the mercury really doesn't go into the sediments too easily, but it does bioaccumulate in life. Okay, and the Grassy Nations First Nation and the White Dog Reserve, they basically have three meals a day from fish and all that fish got contaminated. Now, the Grassy Nations First Nation Reserve is 100 kilometer downstream of this Dryden Mill. The White Dog Reserve is a few hundred kilometers downstream. So the concentrations are highest for the Grassy Narrows Reserve. Google Grassy Narrows mercury ontario and you can read the wikipedia page all about the details of the history but here we are 60 years later okay from 1962 roughly and the mercury contamination is worse it's not better diane Sachs, the ontario environmental minister did a report in 2017 and and talks all about the you know how it's even worse today okay what does mercury poisoning do? It affects generations and generations of people. Um, it causes a so-called Minamata disease. Now, the Minamata disease is so-called because in Minamata, Japan in 1956, cats were going berserk. Then people started going berserk, having very unusual neurological symptoms and having, there was all kinds of diseases and mortalities and deaths. And, uh, you know, they studied it back in Japan and, and it was the diseases they call the Minamata disease. So it's a really nasty sort of thing. The environmental levels are 100 parts per billion of the uh, methyl mercury, um, the concentration. And they did hair samples of all the people in Grassy Narrows and they found that contamination of was well over 100 uh, parts per billion in many, many people. It was, uh, and uh, they went back, they did this study in the sort of late 70s, and they went back, you know, 20 years later to, to retest people's hair, and, uh, you know, nobody was left alive by that point. Okay, the third video I'm going to do in this series is the residential schools. 
So the people from Grassy Narrows, of course, the children from the reserve, Grassy Narrows, were subject to the residential school system. So kids were torn from their parents to be re-educated, in quote, so that the to take the Indian out of, out of, to kill the Indian within the person so that they would be assimilated into, into uh, white society, into society in Canada. And of course, this was a government run and government push. And they used the, so the state push, and they used the, the um, church to implement the uh, tactics of, of uh, taking the complete culture of the First Nations people out of, out of them. So the children of Grassy Narrows were taken and sent to a residential school uh, in um, McIntosh, Ontario. Okay, uh, so, and this was done from 1876 to 1969. And what I'm going to do, once I leave Dryden, um, I'm going to drive up to the Mac Macintosh, Ontario and see if I can find the um, residential school where the kids from Grassy Narrows went. And you can see how far it is from uh, Grassy Narrows and uh, talk about that aspect. And then I'll be driving onwards to Grassy Narrows itself to try to uh, see what I can see up in that area. So three videos. The source of the mercury contamination, which is the plant here in Dryden, Ontario, and then the residential schools in McIntosh, Ontario, where all the children of Grassy Narrows went forcefully, and then Grassy Narrows Reserve itself, 100 kilometers downstream from this plant, where, where uh, you know, the environment was, the, the, uh, the residents were completely, you know, they were eating fish three times a day. I mean, so basically their entire livelihood was t torn up. So here you've got a First Nations, you know, Aboriginal, um, group of people and uh, the Canadian, the, the uh, plant basically poisoned them all, okay, and it's been going on for 60 years. The poisoning and all of the kids in the community were torn from them between 1876 and 1969. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that they'll do a ground penetrating radar search and Macintosh, I'll try to find the area. If I can find the residential school and do that video, I'll be walking around the grounds and uh, I'm, sh I, I'm sure they haven't been, you know, or the cemetery there and the borders and see, you know, sometimes you can see little depressions in the ground where, uh, where unmarked graves are. So I'll see if, if that's possible. So those are the, the three videos. So, so let me get on a bit to, the, um, to this particular plan. I'm going to walk around, walk and talk, talk the walk, and uh, try to get uh, a view, a different view of where, where the park is here. Okay, so there's a nice little park. I'll just uh, walk and I'll hold the camera forward and show you uh, some of the, uh, some of what's here. Okay, so you can see a yellow boob, I guess, you know, welcome sign on the bridge. I think that's where the employees uh, go to the plant. And, uh, you know, these uh, wood plants, they're much more than just uh, pulp and paper. Okay, what they do is, uh, one of the big things that they do nowadays is they take um, the trees and they grind them up into sawdust. So you have a big heaping pile of sawdust and then they uh, bond the sawdust together to produce uh, laminate or particle boards. Um, and then they, they can, uh, you know, cross glue them, basically epoxy the particle boards and, uh, you know, produce, uh, you know, plywood and other types of lumber products. Or they can actually take the sawdust itself. I hope I don't fall off this thing, but we'll have a look and see anyway. If I do, you'll get an underwater picture of the little fishies. This thing's pretty solid, actually. So the, uh, yeah, then they uh, compress the uh, sawdust into wood pellets. And they ship the wood pellets off to, uh, to Europe. And this is supposed to be good for the climate. Bioenergy with carbon capture and storage sort of stuff, right? Because then the wood pellets can be burnt 
and furnaces to provide heat and to provide you know thermal energy generation and if you capture the co2 from the combustion um, then you it's the cap carbon capture and storage so bioenergy with carbon capture and storage you know the most ridiculous idea you know a lot of the, the problem with climate change and co corporations finding their own solution is you know they think of this idea that will help the corporation and they push it like crazy in the media this is a bit uh hey this is fun as long as i don't if well if i fall off it won't be so fun but anyway you get the idea right so so we've got this uh huge i'm a little bit shaky here i don't know it's because i'm doing the video there i got my sea legs back okay so dryden ontario this is where we stayed uh, for the night last night. So I left Ottawa about 9.30 on Sunday morning. And we drove uh, through the night, two drivers, and uh, just kept driving the next day. And we ended up in Dryden, Ontario, where we stayed uh, last night in a nice motel. So what the plans are, so from here we're heading to um, through, through Dryden, through the rest of Dryden to um, McIntosh, Ontario. And then I'll film the video there if we could find the reservation or if we can't find it, I'll film the region. And then from there, we're going to, we'll go south again to the highway and then we'll go to uh, the, the, the road which goes up to Grassy Narrows. The road ends up there. And then from there, we're going to head to Manitoba, cross the Manitoba border and go to Winnipeg and uh, you know look at the look at the areas where Winnipeg was flooded you know visit uh, some friends there um, and then we're going to head off over to um, the uh, over over to Saskatchewan and uh, you know we're going to go through Regina but just east of Regina is a residential school where 751 unmarked graves were just found recently and now there's huge cries to not really to use Canada Day differently you know not to celebrate the birth of the country and the foundation of the country but to it'll be more solid affair where lots of cities and towns and places are saying well we're going to kind of cancel Canada Day we're going to you know it's going to be have a deeper meaning than just the partying and so on because Canada is you know grappling with this uh, so-called new information about over a thousand people so 751 uh, First Nations people gra unmarked graves in Saskatchewan just east of Regina and of course a few weeks ago it was the two it was the uh, 215 unmarked graves in uh, British Columbia and of course as we head west you know, we're, we'll go, we're gonna go to Calgary and then we'll probably go up to Edmonton and depending on, if there's a lot of storms in the south, we'll be chasing some of the storms, maybe see if we can spot some tornado, find some extreme weather events. And if not, we're going to go north to the Fort McMurray and the Athabasca tar sands and see some of the tailings ponds, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so those are the plans. I have to be back in around Kenora, Ontario on July 6th to pick up my uh, tree planting son and his friend. And then we'll be taking a different route um, back, to, back to Ottawa. But I'm trying to, uh, I'm fundraising some for this trip to cover some of the expenses on the GoFundMe site. Um, and I'll provide a link in the description of this video for you. And also um, I've got my blog, paulbeckwith.net. And uh, you know, you can help out with the trip by donating to either of those places. So. Thank you for listening and, uh, you know, onward to McIntosh, Ontario to try to find the residential school that housed the children um, from the Grassy Narrows um, Ontario uh, re Reserve. Okay, thanks again for listening and take care and uh, bye for now.